What's up guys? So I think we're gonna tackle this entryway today. It's kind of late in the day. It's like 3.30 right now, but uh, I was kind of bored, finished up some work early, and I think I'm gonna start scraping and painting the walls, prepping the plaster, and getting it ready for paint. So you can already see I'm starting to make a mess. I had done some patching earlier, but there was still some loose paint that didn't, uh, the patch didn't bond to. So we're just gonna scrape all that off and start over. Plaster is cheap, so I'd rather have a good finished product and make this look as amazing as possible. Everything's pretty smooth up there. There's a little bit of patching I need to do there and some paint failure there. And then I got to scrape all that paint failure there, but everything's pretty good. So one of the things I just wanted to, you know, include in the videos, you guys have asked for more like technical um, parts of this renovation is just like, you know, once I've, I've plastered and patched that, and I'll kind of walk you guys through that process as well. All we're doing is filling um, voids to make it as smooth as possible and getting the best finished product possible. So this is one that's very light and uh, probably the easiest one. And instead of sanding that with sandpaper, I'm just gonna take a damp sponge and knock down all these high spots and feather the edges into the other material and that'll clean up really nice. And then this, there was more of a uh, thicker patch. I'm gonna take my five and one tool. I'm gonna scratch the big edges off and then I'll do the exact same thing with the wet sponge and just feather those edges. That way I'm making as little mess as possible as we are living through a renovation. And I don't need that much dust everywhere. <laughs> Just something to point out is I'm doing renovations and uh, fixing different areas of the house. Sometimes I'm saying plastering, but I'm actually just using uh, some fast joint compound on these little patches just because the working time is so much lower. Now, if it was something that I really need to adhere to the lats, like a complete replastering of a wall, I'm going to use real um, gypsum plaster for that. All right, I'll show you real quick on just this little area. Um, some of these smaller repairs. Like I said, it's just a surface repair. All I'm trying to do is build up enough material to make it flat for paint. So I'm getting enough plaster on my, my putty knife here. I'll press it in as I'm exiting. I know where the low spot and the high spot is. So the low spot is all the way in the corner in this particular crack or hole. Um, and then I'm gonna feather it out over the high spot. And you just want it as flat as possible. I don't want too much material on there so I don't have to do too much sanding. So I can get a little bit more. And hit it from a couple of different angles. Like I said, always uh, want to feather out your excess on the edges. Minimize the amount of work you have to do later. And you can kind of see my, my tool marks are being left on the flat wall here. And I actually don't need any material that far out on the wall. So I'm just gonna scrape all that excess off and work it back into the hole that I was working on before. But I do wanna press it in in the corner. Otherwise I'm gonna have these big clumps I'm gonna to have to scrape off later. And I don't wanna do that much work. recoat that other side. Again, grabbing some material. Since I'm working with the top left part of my trowel in this corner, I'm gonna put all the material on the left-hand side of the trowel and just work that in the corner. Steady pressure, and like I said, you're working yourself from the low point to the high point. And I'm gonna get rid of the excess again. Just flatten that out. Now I could leave that as a, a solid base first coat and then just come back and scrape later, but I don't wanna do that much work later. So I'm going to feather all this extra out. Use my tool. Keep in mind, the cleaner your tool is, the sharper the edges. 
these are things you're going to be down the road. So scrape your tool off regularly. <laughs> wrap up pretty much everything I'm gonna do in this little section of the hallway obviously there's more but we're not gonna take care of that today I have to show in a couple hours so I want to give this a little opportunity to dry and maybe I'll be able to get some of the sanding done like I said I'm using a 90 minute joint compound so all I'm doing is leveling the surface from plaster to paint where the paint has failed from the plaster we're just gonna bond that with that 90 minute mud um, so hopefully I'll be able to sand all this. Like I said, I'm just gonna take a damp sponge, knock down the high spots once it dries. You can already see some of this stuff is starting to dry. This side, I had to go pretty heavy. Some of the uh, cracks and stuff that I was filling were pretty deep. So there's a little bit more mud in there than there is on this side. But this side should be almost ready to go, probably another 45 minutes. And here has nothing to do with painting or lighting, but Brittany locked herself out, and I found it hilarious. Please enjoy. <laughs> I locked out. Fuck. <laughs> Alright, guys, so I go wait. Continuing with the raccoon adventures, we caught one in the attic and he had destroyed some insulation and plastic. So it's really difficult to get them out of the house be without going through the house. So I devised this method of paracording them off the roof. And you can see him Mission impossible in right here. And then we took him out to the country and was able to release him into the wild. Hopefully he's doing well. You know, those mansion raccoons, it's really hard to adapt to country life after you've been living cushy like this cute little bugger has. All right, guys, so as you can tell, new flannel, new day. We've given the plaster some time to dry. It's a couple days later. Um, I did end up getting it all painted, so I'll kind of show you guys the finished product. But through that waiting time, I kind of got a little bored. And me and Britt were sitting on the couch, and I ended up ordering some new light fixtures. So uh, this part of the video, I'm gonna kind of show you guys the process for our little light fixture swap out. I've got one more coming. Brittany hates this random chandelier. Uh, which it is kind of in a goofy spot, but thinking back to the purpose of this room when it was built, it was just for eating, not necessarily a living room. So they probably had a table there, which would make sense why they had a chandelier there, but it is a little dated. So uh, we ordered a more modern one. Uh, it should still fit the house very well, but I also ordered these pendant lights and I was a little worried they weren't gonna be big enough. Cause I wanted kind of a statement piece for the room. But the funny thing is that with the brush gold finish and the uh, flame light bulbs, it actually fits the room so well, they almost blend in. So they're not much of a statement piece. So the one that we got for the, this chandelier that should be here tomorrow uh, is gonna be a little more bold. So as you can tell, the plaster was all done. I put a few coats of paint on it and then we were able to hang these mirrors. Um, our project today is going to be replacing this pendant light with one I ordered off of Wayfair. Um, so that came in yesterday, and we'll get that mounted up today. Okay, so next step uh, is going to be getting that light down so I can get the new one hung up. 
first things first, when you're playing with electrical, make sure that you turn it off at the circuit breaker panel. Um, for this particular light fixture, I happen to know that I disconnected the wiring from the switch, which is behind me, down to the junction box that it was drawing power from. And then that power box then runs to the circuit breaker. So I'm not super concerned that there's any electricity going through it, but I am redundant. So I'm gonna test it with my voltage detector here, uh, just to be safe, because I hate being shocked. <laughs> Okay, with every project in this house, you always find something funky. And since they didn't put the fixture uh, retaining bracket onto an actual junction box, it looks like they just ran wire, which if you can see in there, right there, it's conduit that goes into fabric wrapped wire. So that's kind of interesting. But in order to fix this to the plaster, which the plaster and the lats are plenty strong, but they use butterfly clips. So I have to go either try and fish these out once I get the screws out or just go buy new ones and tuck these into the ceiling and never see them again. So those are my options. So if you're not familiar with these types of, usually used for like wall hangers, I've seen people mount pictures with them. There are some that are strong enough to mount cabinets with. I would never recommend that, but that's me. Um, so you take them and you drill a small hole and then small enough to fit it like this. And then when it gets to the other side, these expand out and then your weight is supported by a broader um, clip as opposed to, you know, like a small nut or washer. All right, so per usual, I got one of the clips out, but the other one decided it was gonna hide in the house forever. So I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store and grab another one. But in the meantime, let's get the other light prepped, put together. So it's ready to hang once I have all the hardware that I need. fixture changes that we've done lately. I am absolutely sick of all the little balls of foam that keep coming off every box. I'm tired of cleaning. I feel like all I do is clean. Kind of hoping there'd be some sort of hardware that would be able to be utilized for what I have going on, but unfortunately, um, modern light fixtures use these brackets, and the brackets screw right into the junction box, which is fixed to a stud. Uh, but this one is just kind of free floating, so we're gonna have to do it to the plaster. I don't think this light fixture is heavy enough to actually pull the plaster down, so we should be fine there. And it does look like there is a junction box in the hole, it's just off center, and they decided to move the the light fixture over instead of moving the whole junction box over like you're supposed to. So, kudos to them for creativity. Ten points. All right, so it looks like this is the center section, and there is some assembly required. I think there are little crystals that hang off all these little leaves, branches, whatever. And we made a good choice because the gold on this fixture actually matches the gold on the other fixtures perfectly. I'm gonna have to hang all those little crystals, not a big deal. I 
another thing to take in consideration when you're renovating a project that is as um, time consuming and um, large scale as this is that uh, all these boxes, so every time we order a new appliance or a new light fixture or order new materials, uh, there's always all the trash to get rid of and I am so sick of filling the dumpsters because they literally, I order a dumpster for monthly service and then they're coming in dumping it every Tuesday, but Tuesday morning after they dump it, I fill it right back up with all the stuff that builds up in the garage over the last two weeks. So almost getting the garage cleared out, but like I said, all the styrofoam and empty boxes is just getting annoying. So this box should be the last of it, and this will be all the little crystals to hang. fixture from Wayfair. I found the pendant lights that were in the kitchen that I showed you guys earlier on Wayfair as well, um, but Amazon had them cheaper and they looked to be identical, so I just ordered them off Amazon. Um, I also ordered them as a scratch and dent box, so I got them for half price. And uh, I can't tell the difference, so. And they came, the boxes were scratched, yes, but nothing on the inside of the box was damaged, so. Thought that was a great way to save a few bucks. <coughs> All right, so with this, unless you guys want to see me put this together for the next five minutes, I think we're just going to time lapse this and make this go a little quicker. So that wasn't too bad, went pretty quick. Uh, I just got a whole bunch of these little clips that go onto the crystals that put it onto these little branches. And uh, about 70% of them were actually attached. And then I kind of just filled in space with as many of them as were already attached to the crystals. And then I had to go back and put the other ones on, which wasn't a total pain, but annoying. And then I thought I missed one, but they must've sent me a spare. So that's a bonus. Now I just got to put the little sphere that goes around this piece of the chandelier. And then we're gonna head to the hardware store. Does anybody remember the movie, like, I think it was called Lawnmower Man, but it was like a horror movie from the 90s. I had this little thing. Oh, what was that? I can't remember the thing, the guy's name. Hellraiser, maybe? Was it Hellraiser? But yeah, it had the little ball that he went in. That's what this thing reminds me of. But basically, you unfold it. There's a nut at the top of this, and a fish are wire through. And there's a hole in the top of this ball. Once we get the chandelier portion inside the ball, then you just open up all those little rings and that should give us the look we are going for. So, oh, that felt great on the toe. Don't you love renovations when, you know, nothing seems to go right, which is fine, we'll adapt. It's just always playing twice as much time as you think you're going to need, especially if I tell you how much time it's going to take. Then you really need to know that it's going to take twice as long. Oh, there's the thing go. 
There it is. All right, so let's fish these wires through. We got our ground neutral and power. Got the ring so it won't crush my toes again. So close. Now I gotta fish this nut back over all the wires, which it's great that they give you so much extra, but I can't think of a single time I have ever used this much wire to hang a light. Even in houses with very tall ceilings like this, it seems a little redundant. And Snapple fact, never hold a light fixture by its wires like this. I'm just an idiot, don't be like me. Oh. All right, get that on there. I should use a real wrench, but what I have two feet away from me is needle nose pliers. So I'm just gonna snug that up. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. I just don't want it to move around. Be mindful not to scratch the paint on your fixture. Alright, I think that is as good as that part's going to get. And it's free floating anyway, so not the end of the world. But now, let's get these wires out of here. We can open this up. Look how cool it's going to be. I like this. I like this a lot. I think it's going to make the entryway look great. Okay, so I'm gonna clean up a little bit of the floor where I dropped some plaster, made a mess, and then we're gonna hop in the car and head to the hardware store. Oh, more boxes. See what I mean? You got plastic from boxes, you got styrofoam from boxes, you got boxes of boxes. You got boxes everywhere. Got old tiles I need to get rid of, got the water softener. Finally got the toilet out of here. Uh, there was two broken toilets. One of them left in the last dumpster, that's the box for the new toilet. And then that's another garbage can full of uh, ceiling tiles from a different room. Had to get them down so I could treat some mold. And then there's another garbage can that was full of ceiling tiles that we dumped last week. All right, so quick trip, just made it back to the hardware store. So I got all the supplies I need to finish the job, which is Red Bull. And apparently these are called toggle bolts, which makes sense because they toggle. I just didn't know what they were called before, and I apologize. Now we both know. So with that said, I've got what I need to get the new light fixture hung. So I'm gonna wire it up, hang it, and then I'm probably gonna have to go in the basement and work on some wiring to get power to the switch because I disconnected that when we first took possession of the house, and I would like this light to work. have to go potty and that's why you're bugging me tell the people what you want can you go woof you ever go side? okay i'll take it all right you seem very excited about this okay oh man that's why you're excited we got amazon boxes i'd be excited too here we go okay now the dog's taken care of um let's get this light hung i already took the length of chain out i needed um ideally i want the big sphere to be centered. And now that I'm getting too much light, right in this little window here. So that's where I took out the links I'm not gonna need. And now I need to cut the wires and I am notorious for cutting them too short. So I'm just gonna cut them super long and hopefully this all works out, so. That's a wrap for the install. The only thing I gotta do now is I don't have any power going to it, so I gotta go trace the wire and figure out how we get power to the switch. Look how beautiful at night this is.
What's up guys, as you can see, it's a new day and a new flannel. But uh, yesterday I did end up getting the light fixture all set up and I was able to trace down some wiring and get it rewired properly so the light is functioning, which that light hasn't worked since we got the house, so I'm super happy to have that. So after we replaced these two pendant lights in the kitchen here, uh, kind of take a hard look at the chandelier that's in the living room area and Brittany's never really liked the chandelier, so we decided to change it up. So we're gonna be installing this one today. We've got some assembly required and I need to get this chandelier down. So first things first, we're gonna shut off the breaker and make sure that we don't get electrocuted. Um, I'll keep you updated. that is all taken care of and down time to assemble this big guy i just i couldn't figure out if i was missing screws or not because the screws are like integrated into the design of the fixture which is super nice very clean look i just i thought i was missing hardware so i just spent the last two minutes searching for nothing That's a wrap. Looks like we got everything installed. I had to run to the store and get some light bulbs. Actually, I had to run to two stores because that takes 12 bulbs and the first store didn't carry enough. So I went to one of the big box stores. They had enough light bulbs, but even so, like I said, every project, something always has to go wrong. Put 12 light bulbs in. Oh, you can't even see it on video. But that bulb right there, right there where my finger is, doesn't work. So I bought 11 bulbs. I paid for 12, got 11. Uh, what are you gonna do? I'll pick up another one. They were crazy expensive, $45 for 12 bulbs. But beautiful light fixture, super happy with the um, install. Everything was super easy. This side of the house is always easier just because it's the newer side of the house. So all the wiring and junction boxes are more normal. Everything else on that side of the house is super old and you know you always run into some sort of surprise. But Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below. If I did something silly that you caught, please leave a comment below. I'm happy to correct myself, uh, but I need to know what I did wrong first, so let me know. Uh, catch you in the next video.